And all of God's people said, amen. say amen again, amen. one time for the Holy Ghost. Thank Spirit of Timothy for singing this morning. Amen. They came to worship this morning. Amen. My question is not, did they come? My question is, did you come to worship? I'd hate to show up and watch everybody else worship. Watch everybody else praise. And I just sit there and say, oh, didn't they have a good time in the Lord? In the gospel according to Luke, amen. I feel pretty good this morning. Been kind of sick for a couple of weeks, but I feel real good this morning. Amen. And I feel even better after they sung that. Amen. I'm trying to get myself together, but they say he's so amazing. Uh, and then they start listing some of the reasons why he was amazing. Not that I needed somebody else's account, because I know he's amazing for myself, but isn't it good that we have some commonality in his amazements? that we can stand in the presence of his glory. So amazing. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. There you find these words recorded. And again, I'm, I'm trying to get it together. If you pray with me, I, I might get it together. Amen. If not, I might just have to shout it on through and we'll pick it back up next week. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. There you find these words recorded. Now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, who has spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment, or the Old Testament, the, uh, King James just says the hem of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out of me. And now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him, and she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately and he said to her daughter be of good cheer your faith has made you well go in peace if you don't mind I thought I would share with you this morning that I'm about to lose my religion I'm about to lose my religion. There are three things that I have written down to get to, if I can get to them all. It, I want to talk about the confinement of religion. Secondly, I want to ask you, what has religion gotten you? And last, I'm going to say, I'm going to lose it to gain it. I'm going to lose my religion. Before you think I've lost my mind, let me help you up. Some of y'all have said for many years, don't make me lay my religion down so I can tell you off. And when I finish telling you off, I will pick my religion back up. It's amazing that you can lay your religion down, but I can't lose mine. And I ain't even about to tell nobody off. But when I look at religion, when I look at religion, when I look at religion in its current state, when I look at religion in its historical state, I find this one truism to be real. God never intended for us to have religion. He wanted us to have relationship. 
Oh, I feel good right there. You, you do remember that it was in Genesis that he says to Abram, Abram, I need you to leave everything, leave everybody and come to a land that I'm going to show you and I'm going to be your God and you're going to be my people and that's not religion, that's relationship. God says to all, when you hear me knocking at your door, open the door and I'll come in and fellowship with you. That's not religion. That's relationship. He says, when you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That's relationship, not religion. And some of y'all got religion, but you ain't got relationship. Yeah, you better be careful jumping on this right wing agenda, this religious agenda, because what has it gotten you? I cannot go with a religion that once excluded me now that I'm included. That went over y'all head. Let me back up and pick some of y'all up. There was a time that the religious folks said that black folk don't deserve the Christ that we serve. Ah, uh, y'all didn't want me to be political up here. Then y'all should have went somewhere else this morning. There, there was a time, there was a time that we would let you work out in the field, but we didn't want you to have the Christ we were praying about in the church. But then somebody said, let us give them Jesus so that we might be able to control them even more. Y'all, can I go to the history? Can I give you a history lesson? That was religion, that wasn't relationship. Relationship said, let me make sure their soul is saved so that when they die, they may enter into the gates of heaven. That's relationship. But religion said, let us give them a Sunday morning and make them serve us all their life and never rebel and only think about heaven, but nothing on earth. Uh, So I cannot jump on a bandwagon that now wants to exclude the whosoevers and now wants to put an asterisks by the whosoever and say that's not what he really meant. <laughs> what he really meant was only Christians, only those who are already in the household of faith. Well, if that's the case, how can the gospel ever be spread if we never talk to somebody that doesn't know the gospel? Let me help you out. How can we say that which is lost if we never believe the lost need the Christ that we have? The confinement of religion will keep you bowed down, keep you in bondage, keep you messed up, keep you where you won't think, where you won't feel, where you won't experience. Religion will anesthetize your reality and make you think if you just think positive, everything is going to be all right. But is there anybody in here that don't need no anesthesia? You need the healer. Don't make me not feel it. Lord, just help me in my feeling. Confinement of religion. Because religion will make women shut up in the process of church and make you go home and ask your husband. Uh, Let me talk to some of y'all over here. You do remember it was the religion that said wives be quiet in the company of men and go home and ask your husband. So we indoctrinated women for a season that your job is to come to church and be silent. Don't say nothing. Don't pray out loud. Don't praise out loud. Don't worship out loud. Just come here and be cute and let us look at you. And when you get home, you can ask me. But is there anybody that the word said, when I pour out my spirit, there is neither male nor female, bond nor free, that this gospel is a liberating gospel. Oh, y'all don't want to say amen? Some of y'all mad up in here because you still got that same religious mentality. Uh, Some of y'all are so pretty that you're going to be pretty hellacious. Some of y'all are so dignified that you're going to go to hell with your pinky up. But I need to talk to some folk that you didn't come here for a fashion show. And you didn't come here to be looked at. But you came here to lift him up higher and higher and higher. You came here so that the Lord might inhabit the praises of his people. And I don't care 
angry if you roll your eyes at me, but I don't want Jesus to take his eyes off of me. And so I came here with an express purpose just to get my blood. Uh Uh-oh. What has religion gotten you? Uh, What has religion gotten you? It's gotten you the misapplication of scripture. Uh, Religion has gotten you sexism, racism. Religion has gotten you elitism. Religion has gotten you to the point that you think you better than somebody else. Because you had a private sin and they had a public sin. Religion has gotten you to a place that you still think that there's such a thing as a black church and a white church. But I believe when we get to heaven, we're going to have some heavenly bodies that ain't going to have no color, ain't going to have no race, ain't going to have no ethnicity. So if I'm going to a place that race doesn't exist, why am I going to make race all the thing I'm going to deal with down here? If I don't worship with my white brother down here, what makes you think I'm going to worship with him up there? I got to practice while I'm down here so that when I get up here, I'll be ready. What, 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 what has religion gotten you? <clears throat> it's gotten you war and more wars. Uh, religion got you put on the back of the bus. Religion got you all white water fountains, colored water fountains. Religion got you eating at the back counter, paying printed prices. Let me help you out. You paid the same amount that was on the menu, but you didn't have the luxury of walking through the same door that everybody else walked through. So why is it that my dollar is worth more than I am? Uh, What has religion gotten you? It hasn't gotten you anything. Religion got you sicker, got you poor, got you more depressed. Religion has isolated you. And if we're not careful, religion is going to isolate us. Uh We only want to let refugees come to America who are Christian. I find it hypocritical that a country would only allow Christian refugees, but on their money they got in God we trust. I find it, I can't talk about y'all, I find it, I find it ironic that a country will say only Christian refugees, yet when we look at the tapestry of Christianity, it's so many colors and so many folk that came to us that didn't have Christianity in their background. I am so amazed at how we can sit up here and talk about having the favor of God, but we won't take care of the least, the last, and the left out. Let me help you. The Bible says that he will separate the sheep from the goats and say, to them, you did not feed me when I was hungry, you did not clothe me when I was naked, you did not visit me when I was incarcerated, not one time did he say, only Christians. How is it that we're going to read this word in which Christ himself said, I came to my own and they received me not. They had received him. There is the possibility that I might not know him. Come on, walk with me. But because his own didn't receive him, he thought it was not robbery to give some crumbs to the dogs. And I stopped by here to say, bow, wow, yippee, yo, yippee, yay. I happen to be one of the dogs that the crumbs fell to. But is there anybody that understands a crumb from the master's table is better than any kind of full meal from the enemy? 
tonight. Just give me some crumbs and make sure it's from your table. What has religion gotten me? Religion got me that if I had certain diseases, I had to go away from everybody else and live with other folk with other like diseases. And I had to see church folk, religious folk, over there with all the good stuff. And I sat in my village with all the sick folk. But somebody remember reading in this Bible that Jesus came into contact with one of these villages. And I believe there were like 10 lepers he came in to contact with. <laughs> and I believe, I don't know if it's me, maybe I read it somewhere in my Bible that he healed all of them <laughs> and told them now, <laughs> go participate in religious actions. I healed you because of relationship, but go show the religious folk what I did for you. And nine of them started running to go tell the religious folk, look at my hands. My hands look new. Look at my feet. My feet look new. But one of them stopped and said, I can't go do religion when I got relationship. And he bowed down and thanked the Lord. I feel all right now. You got to understand, when you get relationship, you can throw away religion. Some of y'all would have been with the nine. You would have left Christ to go show Reverend Williams. And you had the presence of him right there. Let me help you out. I know the program says it's another thing after this. But if praise and worship gets good to you, you ought not run to the next thing. You ought to stay right there in the presence. Because I'd rather have the presence than have the next thing. Is there anybody that understands what I'm saying? When I feel the presence of him, I want to stay right there and stay in his presence. I'm about to lose my religion, y'all. I'm about to lose my religion. Y'all don't mind if I talk about this woman, do y'all? I'm going to get up out of here after I talk about this woman. Before you think this woman is nameless, put your name in there. Before you think that she ain't got no last name, put your last name in there. And the Bible says for 12 long years, she had a problem with her feminine issues that she was bleeding for 12 years. Mind you, she was good and religious like most of us. She wore a white dress on first Sunday, had a hat on on third and fourth Sunday, gave her 10 percent. She was part of a mission circle. I believe she ushered on the second Sunday. I believe she sung in the mission choir on the fifth Sunday. I believe she showed up at Sunday school and gave a dollar every Sunday. I believe, I just believe she showed up at three o'clock and act like she was giving what they asked for, but she wasn't doing them but giving up them two or three little dollars. But she was so religious that the Bible says she went to every single doctor there was. She went to her primary care physician and he couldn't heal her. He, she asked him for a second opinion. She went to the second opinion and he couldn't heal her. She asked him, send me to a specialist. She went to a specialist and he couldn't heal her. She asked for him to send me to somebody else. She went to every single doctor and here it was. She had a little money. She, she wasn't broke. She was the kind of sister that she could buy a car every other year. And she was the kind of sister that when folks went to school, she'd write them a little check and give them a little bread money, give them a little book money. This wasn't no broke sister. She wasn't from the projects. No, she had a house. She had a four bedroom in the suburbs. Why? Because the Bible is clear to tell me she spent all she had and went to all the physicians. It's right there in the text. I don't want you to think I'm not in the text. But here it is. In all of her religiousness, in all of her search for this, she found herself still sick. 
Oh, you can't say amen. Let me help you all out. Let me contemporize the text. You can come to church every Sunday. You can be a part of the mission board. You can be a part of Sunday school. You can sing in the choir. You can pray all day long, all night long. You can show up on Wednesday night. You can show up at 3 o'clock service. You can come to 6 a.m. service. You can come to early sunrise service. You can do all that and spend all your money and still be sick. Ah, uh, you didn't see it. get this. Let me tell you something. Just because I asked for healing don't mean I'm going to get healing down here. Is there anybody that understand that by his stripes I'm healed? But sometimes my healing is so supernatural that it blows physical mentality. Sometimes my healing is so awesome that doctors can't find it. But I got to know that I 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 am still healed even when the x-rays don't show it. Even when the blood tests don't show it. I got to know that I know that I know that I know that I no, when I touch him, I am healed. Still, still talking about this sister. Uh, she had, she had nerve, deacons, to raise, be raised in the Baptist church. Had a nerve to have a daddy that was a pastor. Had a nerve to have whatever, and she had the nerve to go out in public when she was on her uh, y'all don't want to say it but y'all know what I'm talking about you do realize that in this time and date that when it was that time of the month you were not supposed to leave the house that's what that's what religion said religion said that you were unclean you could have took five baths you were still unclean you could have had all the best feminine hygiene products you want you were still unclean but this sister had the nerve to go out in public with her bleeding nasty self so religion said I, I, I didn't say that what religion said about her See, y'all are getting mad when I throw your religion back in your face. But I'm just giving you what you give other folk. When you look at them because they skirt is too short. When you look at them because they got on pants. When you look at them because they wore something you didn't think they should have wore. I'm just giving you back what you give to them. Now, if you can't take it, don't you get it. Don't get up and walk out. You will show that you're guilty. She had the nerve, had the nerve to get dressed that morning, put on her clothes, and go to the meeting because she heard Jesus was passing by. She had a nerve. Now, she... She knew from all them Sunday school lessons that she wasn't supposed to even touch another man, let alone the God man. She knew, I mean, she had been the, she had, listen, listen, listen. She had graduated. She was a part of the Red Circle, the Hannah Circle, the Esther Circle. I mean, she wasn't new to this. She knew better, but she had the nerve to put on her clothes, Deacon Reddings, and go out to the church meeting and start touching folk with her nasty self. I mean, you got to understand what religion said. Religion said that if I knew she was on her menstrual and she touched me and I was a priest, I could have had her stoned. And she had the nerve touching folk. I mean, had the audacity to push some people. I mean, she went to etiquette school. She had a certificate from Armalita's modeling class. And she had the nerve with her nasty self to show up touching folk. Can y'all please excuse me? Excuse me. Excuse me. And when, when nobody moved for her, pushing folk. Y'all know how some of y'all get 
is about to be Black Friday. I ain't gonna call no names, but some of y'all over here in this section right here, and you about to go to Walmart and get that deal. You about to start pushing some folk. With a nasty self, touching folk. Now she done got uncouthed, pushing folk. Still couldn't get close enough. So then, she gets down on her knees. And she from the suburbs. She ain't supposed to be on her knees when you from the suburbs. She know better. She graduated first in her class. She got a bachelor's degree. Now she on her knees crawling. Touching folk on the right part of their leg so when they move over, she can move to the left. You got to be strategic when you get on your knees. And she's moving through the crowd. And she knows she nasty. I don't want y'all to miss the fact that she nasty. I don't want y'all to miss the fact that religion said she was nasty. Religion said she was unclean. Her education said she was too dignified for this. Her training said she was too good for this. Yet she didn't touch some folk. She didn't push some folk. And now she's crawling between folk legs. Stepping on their new shoes. Messing up folks' stilettos. Messing up folks' Jordans. She ain't even paying attention to the fact that religious folk are now talking about her. Let me help you out. Unsaved folk cussed her out when she pushed them. But now religious folk talking about her because she on her knees crawling. Look at that missionary. She was had all white on last Sunday. Now she crawling. Look at her. Looking for crumbs. Look at her. Boy, she must be crazy. Y'all know I heard she had that stuff. Y'all know how people get. You know I heard. I heard. Heard her husband left her because. Heard her kids don't act right because. And now religious folk been talking about her, but she ain't even paying attention to the religious folk. She's just crawling and inching her way closer and closer and closer. And as Jesus is passing by, she builds up enough courage just to reach out, not to touch his hand. She ain't high enough not to hug on him. She ain't high enough not to put her arms around him and kiss him. She ain't high enough. She just want to touch the hem of his garments. And when she touched it, she put her hand back. And all of a sudden, things started changing. Is there anybody in here that understands if you get close enough to him and you touch him, everything will start changing. She didn't look at nobody else. I believe she looked at her own hands, looked at her own body. I know I should be bleeding, but I don't feel flow no more. I know I shouldn't be here, but something got over me. It's more than chill bumps. I done got something at the hip depths of my soul. She got. She's on her knees. Feeling something she ain't never felt before. And Jesus asked the religious folk, stay right there. Who touched me? And religious folk had to pontificate. Look at all these folks. You think we gonna know who touched you? We at the mega fest. There are folk everywhere. You think I know who touched you? And Jesus said, Somebody touch me that had purpose. It wasn't like the usher who shook my hand. It wasn't like the sister that wanted me to come to her mission.
kitchen meeting who shook my hand. Somebody touched me who didn't want nothing else but me. He, he said, he says, he says, somebody touched me with the purpose of being healed. They don't want no car. They don't want no house. They don't want no new dress. They touched me just to be healed. And when the woman realized that the religious folk didn't have a good story to tell. And when she realized everybody was pointing at her. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh -oh, y'all, y'all, let me take you to the text. Because, see, we didn't skip over this text so long that we don't even understand what the text says. She says, verse 47, Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden. How can she not be hidden when she was in the middle of a crowd and Jesus just said, who touched me? It's because all y'all good religious folk, instead of saying it was me, pointed her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The nasty one, Jesus. The uncouth one, Jesus. I heard she been pushing folks, Jesus. I heard she crawled up here, Jesus. I heard she was touching folks, Jesus. And you know she should have never been here. She should have had a nasty tale at home. That's who it was. And when she couldn't be hidden no more, she did like the real ones do. Whenever we don't have a church testimony to play. Whenever we quit talking about, I don't know where I would be at if it wasn't for the Lord. Because somebody walked in who was where we used to be. Whenever she walked in, and you know, nobody know the secret but you and her. And you couldn't play pious no more. Could you say she might say something that went over some of y'all head? She says, it's, it's me. Scared of religion. Because they're they going to stone me. Scared of church folk. They ain't going to talk to me no more. It's me, Jesus. I, I touched you. But I don't want you to think bad of me. I had this issue for 12 years. And I went to a whole lot of religious folk. And not one of them could help me. I went to a whole lot of religious meetings. Not one of them could help me. I went to a whole lot of religious folks' houses. Not one of them could help me. But when I barely touched the hem of your garments, I know I shouldn't have been here, Jesus, but I, I didn't have nowhere else to go. I know I shouldn't have been here, but I didn't know what else to do. When I touched the hem of your garment, something happened, Lord. I heard you had power, but something happened, Lord. I heard you were a healer, but something happened. You got so much glory on you that I didn't even touch skin. I just touched cloth. But something happened on the inside of me. And Lord, I don't mind telling you, I'm whole now. So if you want to stone me, it's all right. I'd rather live a moment healed than 12 more years sick. I'd rather they talk about me and I'm healed than to be sick and they just smile in my face. I'd rather nobody else invite me out and to know that I got blessed assurance 
than for them to keep rolling their eyes at me. So I'm trembling because I'm scared. I'm trembling because I'm nervous. It's been a long time since I wasn't sick. It's been a long time since I haven't had this condition. And I don't know what to do when I'm not in chaos. I'm speaking to somebody right now. I don't know what to do when I'm not in crisis. That touch, Lord, it changed everything. And now I'm uneasy because I don't know what to do now that I've got peace in my life. I don't know how to act now that I got joy on the inside. I know how to be mean. I know how to be nasty. I know how to be rude. But now I've been touched and I don't know what this new life is all about. So, Lord, that's the testimony of real believers. Real believers know what I'm talking about, that this new life makes you nervous. I know how to cuss everybody out. I don't know what to do when I got to bless them. I know how to fight. I don't know how to hold people. I know how to do them things. But once I touch the hem of his garment, it changed some things for me. And now I'm here. And I feel better than I've ever felt before. Now I'm here. I know I shouldn't be here. But I'm still here. And Lord, what, 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 what am I going to do? What? What am I going to do? What's, what's the next move? What's, what's the next step? What, what's going what's to what's happen next, Lord? What's, what's going what's to happen next? What's, what's going to happen next? I need to talk to my what's going to happen next members. You, you don't know what's going on tomorrow. What's going what's to happen next? I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad, I'm glad you was real enough to ask. What's, what's, what's next after, after I give my life to the Lord? I've, I've been gangbanging my whole life, and now that I give my life to the Lord, what's, what's next? I didn't have five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten me, and now, now I didn't gave my life to the Lord. What's, what's next? I'm trying to live holy, but I don't can't even spell holy. What's, what's, what's next? I need to talk to some what's next folk that you trying to get to the next part of your life. You, you trying to go higher in the Lord. You tired of being where you are, and this woman looks at the Lord and say, what's, what's next and he says uh, he, he didn't he didn't say nasty he, he didn't he did that ain't in the text religious folks calling her nasty but he didn't call her he didn't call her nasty instead he gives her the highest title a father can give a woman he says daughter Y'all, y'all gonna make me shout by myself. You, 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 you came to him, and he, he, he's calling you daughter, but you don't know how to answer to that yet. You ain't, you ain't never had a father. He, he called her daughter. He says, daughter, <laughs> be, be of good cheer. Can, can I, can I contemporize the text? He says, daughter, don't worry about your haters. Daughter, don't worry about the religious folk. Daughter, don't worry about church folk. Just go ahead and smile. Daughter, don't worry about the rumor mill. Daughter, don't worry about the naysayers. Daughter, don't worry about the gossipers. Daughter, be of good cheer. I wish I had somebody. He says to a daughter, you came here nasty, but your faith. Oh, help me somebody. Your faith. While all the other folk are trying to do selfies with me and Jesus, your faith said it ain't about a picture. Just let me touch him. Just let me touch him. Let I may know him. He says your your faith has made you well. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all. I'm trying to keep it to myself. He, he says, your faith has made you well. Don't go to the synagogues. They won't understand this. 
don't run to the mission circle. They won't understand this. Just get up and go in peace. And everywhere you go, everybody gonna wanna know. I thought you was nasty. I thought you was sick. But is there anybody that can testify? I might be sick, but I don't look like it. I might be hurting, but I don't look like it. The Lord, the Lord has touched me. And I'm never, never going to be the same again. Real folk who know that you didn't have to crawl through some stuff. Real folk that know you didn't have to push through some stuff. Real folk that know all you got was a touch of his garments. But healing came in your life. That's why I gotta lose my religion because when I think about the goodness of the Lord and all he's done for me my soul my soul my soul cries out hallelujah thank you for blessing me when I look back at all the stuff that the Lord me through. I can dance. I can dance. I can dance. All. All. All night. I lose my religion. I'm going to lose it get relationship because you don't think I deserve to be here but what you don't know you were there when the Lord called me you were there when he saved my soul you were there when he washed me you are now so I refuse to be religious and still sick I refuse to be dignified and still depressed I refuse to be elegant and still broke I refuse to look pretty only to have to cry myself to sleep all night I refuse now if you still want to play that religious game keep on playing it but is there anybody here that's real enough I mean real to say you was that woman with an issue of blood and you heard that the Lord was passing by and you made up in your mind I shouldn't be out today. I shouldn't be at the meeting. They don't know what I did last night. I shouldn't be at the meeting. They don't know what I drunk last night. I shouldn't be at the meeting. They don't know what I smoked last night. But something on the inside is pulling me. Pulling me. I don't know what it is. But it's pulling me. So I came to Jesus just as I was. I was weary, wounded, and sad. But I found in him a sweet old resting place. And he had made me glad. Good evening, new hope. Good afternoon, new hope. If I don't ever see you again, I stop by to tell you, he called. 
on me son and sent my faith has on me and he told me to go on go on go on if I perish then let me perish I'm gone to save the king if my mother don't go father don't go sister don't go brother don't go I'm going to see I'm going to see the king I lost my religion to pick up my relationship and every day I'm picking up my cross because I'm in relationship uh, I'm about to get up out of here you do realize that if you get in relationship with the right person it'll make your relationship with other people a whole lot better oh I feel good right there since I've been in relationship with him I smile at folk that I used to tell off since I've been in relationship with him I love folks that I used to hate since I've been in relationship with him I pray for folk that I used to not speak to since I've been in relationship with him I forgive folk that show up did me wrong since I've been in relationship with him my walk is a little bit better my talk is a little bit better I got joy on the inside I got peace that surpasses all understanding and every now and again when the mountain gets too big because I'm in relationship with him he picks me up and helps me to walk is there anybody is there anybody ever had to walk Since I've been in relationship with him, I ain't worried about how you think my worship is perceived. Since I've been in relationship with him, if that woman can do all that and not be worried about all y'all, Hello, somebody. Some of y'all know you've been strung out. But the Lord delivered you. And you worried about that stuck-up sister behind you. Some of y'all know you've been depressed and wanted to commit suicide. But the Lord stepped in your room and spoke life to you. And you worried about that stuck up brother some of y'all know you ought to be dead and gone but the Lord made devil stand back and came to where you were and picked you up and you heard about somebody looking at you crazy you ought to lose your mind when you think about what God has done for you all the doors, all the hell, all the sickness, all the disease, all the pestilence, all the rumors, and you worried about somebody rolling their eyes. Please, if you think I'm undignified, you ain't seen nothing, nothing, nothing yet. I'll become even more undignified 